Hello and welcome to this episode of Cloudbytes TV. This is the first, I'm going to say, full episode of our Lightning um, Web Components series. And for those that are just catching up, what we're doing is we're taking our Aura Components that we built in our Aura Components series, um, and we're going to migrate them over to Lightning Web Components. And this is the first component here, the Account List Component. If you haven't, go and have a look at how we did the Account List Component when we were doing it in Aura, there'll be a card that should pop up now with a link for you. Go and have a look at that and check that out if you haven't. And what we're going to show you is the difference here as to how we can migrate this across to a Lightning Web Component and how much cleaner the code is. So on my screen, I have uh, the three files that make up our Lightning Web Components. That's our account list HTML, JS, and the JS meta. And I've also got our account list Aura controller, which is the same Aura controller we had before. Note here we've got this additional cacheable value that we didn't have on the original one. And that just means that we're gonna cache the value um, locally so we don't have to keep on retrieving it every time. So it'll be a bit snappy and a bit quicker for us as well, which is nice. So the HTML, what have we got here? What's, what's slightly different? So we have a template tag that wraps everything and that is a standard HTML template tag that says, this is defining a component for us for reuse. Then we have our Lightning Card base component. This is one of the ones that Salesforce provides for us out of the box. In that, we've got a title, which is just a standard attribute, and we have an icon name. And again, one of the nice things about using some of these standard components and base components that weren't there when we built this out the very first time is that we can reference you know, the standard account Lightning Design System icon in this way, and it will render for us. It's fantastic. We've then got a class around a div just to wrap things um, inside the body properly. And then we've got another template tag. This second template tag has on it a directive, which is the if directive. And what this says is if this is true, we're going to render everything within this template. And if it's false, we won't render it. And what we're using is we're using the accounts.data property. So if there's some data within our accounts object, we're going to return true and we're going to display our data table below, and if not, we're not going to render it. So again, nice and easy conditional rendering there. And then, yeah, we've got our Lightning Data Table standard base component here, and that has a key field so that it requires a key, which we're going to use the ID because that is unique on our accounts, uh, the data that we're using, which is our account data, and then the columns, um, which is the columns. And just to note here, you know, the handlebar notation around the items are variables that we can get from our JavaScript file. So it's really nice and simple to use, really, really quick and easy. We've got rid of all of the uh, the bang v dot notation, so we've not got a view object anymore in the same way as we had before. It's really nice and lean. One of the things I really like about this is that it feels a little bit more like I'm developing standard HTML kind of web pages with JavaScript, in that I've got a HTML file and I've got a JavaScript file, and the two kind of talk to each other and I can add additional JavaScript files around it, but this is the main one I need. And in that file, we've got um, just a few things, really. We've got an import statement or a couple of import statements at the top. The first is for the Lightning element, and the second is for the wire functionality from the Lightning Web Components kind of base. And Lightning element is what is kind of the Salesforce base web component that we're going to be using everywhere. And so we're going to extend Lightning element um, everywhere for it to be usable. And wire is one of the annotations we can use that kind of helps us talk to Apex in a nice way. We're then also going to import our get accounts method, which is from here, get accounts. And what you can see in this JavaScript that I really like is that to import that method, we just say we're going to get from Salesforce Apex, the name of the controller, and the method of the controller. And that's it. It's so nice and quick and easy. It's, it's a real kind of, I just find that very, very nice and easy to use. We're then defining a constant within this file, which is table columns. And that's just taking, it's an array that has um, a series of objects in, which have label, field, name, and type. And that's gonna be used our columns on our data table. And then finally, the real meat of what is happening here is there's, what, three lines of code? We're creating a, a JavaScript class called account list. It's gonna extend lightning element. We're gonna export that so that it's available to the HTML. And we're going to have two items in that. There's a property called columns, which we're setting to be our table columns, and that is what we're referencing here. And then we've also got a property called accounts, which is being set 
from the output from the get accounts method. So this this line here is the one that's probably a bit new. And so the at wire kind of um, annotation, what that does is that says, take this, call this apex function, the get accounts function that we've imported here. And one of the, this is just so nice and easy to use. What we're doing is we're just saying, whatever that comes out as, put it on that property. And that's it. And that property becomes available on the page as our accounts property. And that's where we've got data and all the information we need. Really, really nice and easy. We can also use the wire method and output it to a, um, a function if we want and handle the outcome in a function. We can also do it as well um, and call it imperatively in line rather than in this way. But there's lots of nice ways we can do it. But you know, the, the wiring here is just so simple and easy. I mean, this is realistically 16 lines of code with a lot of spacing in between so I can make it nice and readable for us. But, but that's it. That's all we're going to need. Um, the metadata file, just a very simple metadata file. We've got our API version, so version 45, so we're on Spring 19. Description, is it exposed, a label, and then our targets. And this is a difference again from what we did the first time around. We're not gonna use an application this time, a, a separate kind of application bundle. What we're gonna do is we're gonna use the Lightning App Builder, and we'll see how that comes out in a second. So, we've got our code, we have our HTML, nice and simple, 13 lines there our 16 line JavaScript file, 10 line files there. So what's that? 10, 23, 39 lines of code with a lot of spacing in there. And we're able to retrieve and display a list of accounts. So let's see what that looks like. So if I hop over now to my, uh, my web browser, you can see that I've got a page here. And all I've done to add this on there is by using that is exposed property. I've got this account list component here and I can just drop it on as I've done so. Nice and easy for us to use and as you can see we've got a three column layout so we're going to make it look like we did before. And yeah when I run it it just displays a list of organizations. It's really quick as you can see, very very fast, retrieves the data in, you know, in basically no time at all for us and it has the name, the website and the description displayed for us. Nice and easy and quick for us to use. Really, really, you know, just it's a fantastically simple to use set of code. Um, and yeah, I mean, if you go back and watch the video again from before, you'll see there's a lot of code we have to do around the styling, around the rendering, around the output. Um, and this is just so much nicer and more efficient for us. And when we start adding in um, the ability to do row actions, so when we get in the future, in a later episode, when we get our account info block that displays some information from a selected account, We'll have our lightning actions here at the edge and we can select an action and have that fire an event. So really quick and easy episode for us to see how easy it is to go across there. Again, hope you've enjoyed it. If you have any questions, have any comments, please leave them below. Please hit like if you enjoyed this and, and if you're just happy at how much easier the code is for this than it was previously. Um, and remember to hit subscribe if you want to keep up to date with all of the videos around tips and tricks we're releasing and to make sure you're notified about the next episode when we're going to go away and we're going to build out our create task component. It's going to be super easy for us to do again. Thank you so much for watching. And I look forward to seeing you at the next video.